Every now and then, there's a new product that comes along that makes you just go, holy sh and this, this is one of them. This is the anti-gravity A1. You've got the drone, you've got the grip, and you've got the goggles. This is the setup, and there's nothing else like this. And it's essentially a flying Insta360 X5. Insta360 is the company behind anti-gravity, which is a new brand dedicated to making drones. And so the idea is you can fly this around, and because we have the two lenses, one on the top here and one on the bottom, along with a whole bunch of different sensors as well, uh, you are capturing everything in a full 360 around it. So you fly in one direction, you can look wherever you like, in these goggles, more than that in a second, but because, like an Insta360 X5, you are recording everything, you can then take your footage and put it either into the mobile app or the desktop studio here, play it back, which obviously looks lovely, but unlike any other drone, you can then reframe it afterwards. You can set keyframes, you can use AI within the app, but being able to reframe, not just in terms of the direction, but also the aspect ratio, whether you want 16 by nine or 916, this is the same shot that I've just exported in the two different aspect ratios, which means you don't have to do the whole thing again if you want it for your Instagram and TikTok shorts and also for your YouTube video. And I think the first question a lot of people have is, how is this not an FPV drone, especially as you're wearing these goggles? Well, first of all, let's take the DJI Avato and Avato 2. They are significantly over the 250 gram weight limit. This is 249, which means you avoid a lot of the restrictions. Also, FPV drones are generally a lot faster. They require a lot more experience and training to use them safely and properly. But the A1 here is incredibly intuitive to fly. You literally just point in the direction you wanna go and hold this down. So it's really easy to fly. But crucially, unlike an FPV drone or any other drone on the market, you can't miss the shot. I hope you can tell from the excitement in my voice, but I've had so much fun flying and playing and testing with this over the last month or so. But let's take a step back. Let me show you how this all works. And in my anti-gravity A1 carry bag here, I have the drone itself weighing in about 249 grams, and it looks very similar to other drones on the market, albeit with the two camera lenses. And this very cute little landing gear that automatically deploys when you're coming down, so you're less likely to scratch the lens. Oh, and just quickly, they support replacement lenses. I actually didn't know if they would, but this is literally the accessory to replace the lens. So like you in C360 X5, if you scratch it, ding it, bash it, whatever, even though that landing gear is designed to help reduce the likelihood of that, you can replace the lens on your A1. Then we have these epic Dr. Robotnik style goggles. It uses an external battery, which reduces the weight, although it does mean you have one more thing to bring with you and connect. But these put you in the pilot seat of the drone and give you a full 360 live view with a customizable lighting ring on one of the lenses and the other showing a live feed of what you're looking at to anyone around you. And this is what I'm looking at. I've screen recorded from inside the goggles. Essentially, I'm looking at a big square-ish screen in front of me where I can physically look around, move my head and see everything around the drone. So just to give you an idea, if I put the goggles on here, uh, and you can actually adjust the uh, IPD of the goggles with these little knobs underneath to make it more comfortable. You wanna flick out these little receivers to give you better transmission signal. Oh, and if you're wondering, you do have a pass-through camera if you want to see where you, know, you are in real life. So if I wanna fly straight, I'm gonna point it ahead of me and hold the trigger down. Regardless of where I'm looking, it doesn't affect where the drone flies. Only if I turn it or point it up or down or I you know, physically move around, does that impact the flight of the drone. The goggles are purely a viewfinder for the camera. It takes a little bit of time to get used to, but once you've had a few flights in it, it feels incredibly intuitive. It is a lot of kit though, and it's a bit of a faff to set up, especially the first time with software updates, and even the batteries require individual firmware updates. Obviously the drone has a battery as well, which you can swap out, and then you've got the goggles, which also has its own battery, with one side being USB-C, so you can then plug this into any Type-C charger, uh, and the other, a proprietary connector, which goes into the goggles. Uh, the reason for that, as opposed to just being USB-C to C, is anti-gravity wanted the most stable connection possible, with the least likelihood that it accidentally pulls out, and you know, you're left in a dangerous place with your drone or something. Although conveniently, this is the uh, carry case, which actually is quite big, although it takes up about half my backpack uh, space. There's a uh, handy little battery 
charger as well, which can hold two at once. Now, in terms of battery, I found it lasts actually pretty close to what anti-gravity say, just under 30 minutes recording in 8K and doing lots of maneuvers and also recording uh, internally on the goggles. About half an hour, maybe just shy of it from the drone, which isn't best in class, but anti-gravity do stress that there isn't anything else out there that you know can capture 360 like this. Maybe an hour on the goggles, even longer than that on the grips. So basically, as I was flying around Mexico, I would do about 25 minutes or so. It'd say, you know, low power, I'd bring it back, land it, switch this out, and go for another half hour or so. Now, everything I've shown you so far has been shot at the highest 8K resolution. That's at 30 frames per second. But you can drop it down to 5.2K and shoot at 60 FPS, or even 4K at 100. And those two are better options if you want to slow your footage down afterwards to get some slow motion. Alternatively, you can switch the video mode to slow-mo. But for the best image quality, definitely shoot at 8K. And if you're thinking, well, no one needs 8K, that's a stupidly high resolution, well, the idea is it gives you more information, more data to play with for your editing afterwards. When you then come to export this, whether it's from the studio app or the mobile anti-gravity app, you'll be exporting it up to 4K. If you do pick one of these up, make sure you change the bit rate from the default medium to high for the best image quality. And don't forget, you can also take stills with this, actually some pretty nice ones. Now, I consider myself a pretty decent drone pilot, certainly not professional, but I didn't lose it, which is saying something. And while controlling it manually was, as I say, really intuitive, and I got shots like this, just, you know, manually, myself, just moving my body around and sort of turning the drone, it's also definitely worth having a play with some of the pre-made maneuvers like orbit or an escalating orbit or a fly away. There's also a tracking mode, which is really useful if you've got like a car or a bike or a person or just a static subject that you want to fly around. And actually, one of the coolest things about this is if you're with someone who wants to have a go but doesn't feel confident enough about flying just yet, you can actually set up a waypointed sky track course. So, for example, here I'm in this town of Guanajuato in Mexico. I basically flew around, set little waypoints. I can then hand it off to a friend. They press go, and then the drone recreates that route, allowing them basically just to fly around like a bird and look any way they want and not worry about the drone. You can also enable a virtual cockpit, and in the Anti-Gravity Studio app, you can actually add on a virtual head-up display, showing things like your speed and your height. It's a lot of fun. So let's say you've had a successful flight. You've landed it safely, you feel pretty good about yourself, and why wouldn't you? What happens next? Well, you can either take out the micro SD card, which is on the back of the uh, A1 drone here, and that just pops out, it's next to the USB-C, and you can put that into you know, a reader, into your laptop, fire it up into the Anti-Gravity Studio app. Uh, or you can connect it via the USB-C port and transfer it that way, it shows up like a camera on your desktop, or you can transfer it uh, over Bluetooth and Wi-Fi to the Anti-Gravity app on your phone. It's also worth mentioning that they both have internal storage. I think you get about 30 gigabytes on the drone, 20 on the goggles, for capturing you know, screen recordings. We've all been there where we've accidentally forgotten the micro SD card or it's been full and you can't format it or something. So you at least have some built-in storage. Now, if you're editing on your laptop, you can either use the Premiere Pro plugin and just edit it straight from that video editor or within the Anti-Gravity Studio app here, which actually is where basically I spend most of my time. And you can keyframe the different angles. You can switch the aspect ratio. And importantly, with the desktop app, you can export in up to 4K ProRes, which is the highest quality, although some really big files. But I've also been editing via the app because you still have a full video editor where you can keyframe, but you've also got AI editing. So this will detect the highlights from your clip and either put it into a I don't know, 30 or 60 second short for you, or even the entire length of your clip, and the AI will reframe it based on what's in the scene. Export that and away you go. I'm also very relieved to say that as I'm testing this pre-release drone, or maybe it's out now as you're watching this, um, but it does have a very safe return to home mode if you lose connection. The signal's been pretty good, especially if you're facing towards the drone and also have these guys up. But if you do lose signal over a distance or if something comes in the way of it, it will go up to a safer height and then start making its way back home. And then eventually you'll regain connection and you can take over if you want. This will also give you a payload warning if you're mounting extra things to it. It doesn't like that. There is also a dedicated FPV mode if you're a bit more of an experienced pilot and you want the most precise controls. Unless you control the drone with just really subtle wrist movements. Worth having a try, but I much prefer the standard free motion mode. There's also a little light here. So if you're flying this in low light or at night, this will turn on when you're taking off and landing and at low altitude to help illuminate what's below it. The two USPs of this, right, that make this really interesting. Firstly, the control system, the goggles, the grip, how you control it, really unique, really intuitive. It takes a couple of goes uh, to get used to it, and you might be a little bit shaky afterwards. That's fine. Wow. Right on the edge. <laughs> you made it. Take me on your mighty wings tonight. 
It's so much fun. It's literally like a roller coaster, and I've never felt more immersed in a drone experience. Really cool. And the second one, of course, is the fact that you're capturing in 360. So you can't miss the shot. You can reframe it any angle you like afterwards. You can also buy various accessories. You've got the replacement lens kit. You can also buy propeller guards. Very handy if you're known to get into a few bumps and scrapes with your drone. And you can also buy anti-gravity care for repairs and replacements if you want a bit more peace of mind. And I'll leave a link for that in the description below. There are a couple of limitations though. Firstly, you can of course fly it at night, but the quality isn't great. I'd recommend choosing at the 5.2K resolution option rather than 8K to reduce noise a little bit. But unlike the latest Insta360 X5, there isn't a dedicated pure video mode for shooting in low light or at night. There's no ND filter options for these lenses, although thankfully they are replaceable. Uh, and also make sure you clean them regularly because even a tiny smudge or droplet or a little bit of dirt will show up in the footage. So every time you fly this, give the lenses a wipe with a microfiber. But maybe my biggest frustration is there's no option to shoot in log. So you cannot do any major color correction from this. You can't shoot in a flat color profile. It looks good. I think the dynamic range is actually incredible straight out of the camera, especially given that you don't have ND filters either. But for a lot of professionals, being able to shoot in log and then add their own LUTs and grade it in their own way afterwards is quite important. And also, as I say, occasionally you may see a little bit of stitching artifacting in the footage, which isn't ideal. But I absolutely love this thing. And I want to know what you think. If you've got any questions, drop a comment as well. I'll do my best to answer. I'll put the file pricing and a link if you want to buy this in the description below. And I'm just going to leave you with a couple of shots like this. Mm -hmm.